thanks to you guys and the support you've shown the channel, I've been given the wonderful opportunity of being able to review a QHY camera, specifically the QHY 268M. This is the first video of a series that I'm going to be doing on the QHY 268M. It is going to pop up a lot over the next few months and at the end I'm going to post a review with all of my thoughts and feelings on the camera. Just a quick disclaimer, QHY have not compensated me in any way and each video that the QHY268 pops up in is going to feature my own honest opinions on the camera. At the end of the day, I'm here to help you guys, my audience, on your astrophotography journey. Even if you're not buying the QHY268, hopefully this review process will give you a good idea of what to look for in a camera when it comes to specifications as you get onto the buying process. Okay, let's talk quickly about the spacing configuration with the Esprit 120 and the 268 camera. Now, looking at the QHY back focus requirements versus the ZWO back focus requirements, as a beginner, the ZWO ones would actually seem a lot easier to understand, and that can be quite off-putting for someone that wants to go into QHY, but as someone that has never used QHY before, the backspacing was actually really simple to figure out once you looked at the diagrams carefully. Now something I love about QHY is their bolting system and it does have some pros and it does have some cons but what I love is this backspacing is so so sturdy like it's not going to move at all because it is physically bolted to the next part. All of these rings are bolted to the filter reel and the filter reel is bolted to the camera. Now something I am not such a fan of is because the filter reel is bolted to the camera it means you can't take it off very easily to do say dark frames it isn't difficult but it is a process so you have to take the front plate of the filter wheel off then you have to take the filter wheel carousel off that is inside the filter which is a bit footery and then that gives you access to the front plate of the camera which is here and you can unscrew it from the filter wheel Hello, <laughs> this is just future Helena interrupting the video with a little something that I'd just like to mention. So the aim in the end is to make this camera my primary imaging camera and have it as my own. But regrettably, due to the price of it basically and when the review process ends, I am unfortunately not able to do that myself. This is just a little heads up that if you would like to help me on my monochrome journey, there is an Indiegogo campaign link in the description description. The support on there in the past 24 hours has been absolutely incredible. You guys just blow me away and I just can't thank you all enough for the support you've given me so far. However, I totally appreciate that not everyone can afford to donate financially and honestly, if you're listening to this, the support you've given me over the past few years on YouTube and entering the world of astrophotography is more than enough and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why I'm bringing up dark frames so much. Helena, why are you talking about having to take darks in a pitch black room? Well, the reasoning behind this is that the sensor is actually so good. It's so sensitive, which is brilliant when you're under the dark skies because higher sensitivity means that it's easier for the camera to capture smaller details in space. But this means that taking dark frames is more difficult because light can get in and find the sensor so much easier. But when I saw the dark frames, they were the cleanest dark frames I have ever seen. And that is when I got excited. It was before any images had been taken, but that is when I got excited about how good this camera was going to be.
camera is absolutely insane. So there's something I'd like to mention to you before we took a look at the previous night's data. It is nothing to do with the actual camera itself, but I'm hoping that it may help some that are transitioning from color to monochrome imaging. So as you know, with a monochrome camera, you need to use filters and a filter wheel to gain a color image. And I was taking my flat frames with my HA filter and I was getting this really weird ringing artifact, kind of like a really severe vignette. I'll put it up on the screen now. And I didn't know what was causing it. I did some searching and it's a very common issue that I have seen a few others have, and that is called light leak. And it's basically when light gets into places that you don't want it to. So to solve this issue, I bought these things called filter masks, and they're basically these plastic rings that you then stick around the edges of your filters in the filter installation process. This then stops any unwanted light getting onto the camera sensor. And sure enough, when I placed these on my filters, the vignetting pattern was gone and my flats are actually pretty flat. And this is because I used the correct size filters for my camera sensor. So if you're going with an APS-C size sensor, which is the same sensor you would get in a DSLR, you're not going to want to go below 36 millimeter filters. You could even go up to two inch and safeguard yourself if you want to then go for a full frame camera in the future. So I just thought I'd bring that up just in case any of you guys happen to have that issue. I hope that solves things for you and gives you a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in today. I really, really hope you've enjoyed my first monochrome imaging vlog. I certainly loved making it and I absolutely love the results, which I am just gonna show you in a second. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and